Okay, yeah, let's just let's just continue increasing the duration and increasing the damage that our necromancy summons can do. I mean, really, that is so, so fun. And then we also have ghouls. Deal less damage than skeletons, but are harder to kill. Ghoul also applies the stamina, reducing debuff to enemies. Get out of there. Get out of there. Thank you. Now, bear in mind that most things are regenerating, by the way. So mana regenerates, stamina regenerates, and health regenerates, as far as I'm aware. So it's really quite nice. Now, we're just going to continue summoning skeleton so that we can um, continue to have him help us. Hello and welcome to a first impressions of Realms of Magic. This video is kindly sponsored by the developers and if you would like to check out the game there is a link in the description. I absolutely love this so far and I gotta say it's in early access and it feels very very polished right now. This is basically like a cross between Terraria, Minecraft and deep RPG elements and you can kind of guess how that really works. Now, we're just gonna go straight into a new game right here. Now, just look at this. Look at this craziness that they have going on here. We can create any race that you want. You have humans, wild elves, high elves, dark elves, orcs, dwarves, goblins, gnomes, and lizard men. And they all have different skills. They all have different stats. There are professions. There, are, there is crafting. There's magic. There's talent trees, skills, all kinds of crazy items and characters that you can encounter. And it is absolutely epic. Now, personally, I really, I, I am really enjoying this game. I have a, another character that I've been playing quite a lot of, and. I have no idea what I should pick now because I was playing as a wild elf. You can see these are their skills. They have uh, tanning, leatherworking, herbalism, alchemy experience gain. So I thought, hey, that's kind of that's kind of cool, right? And then they also they have wild animals, stone attack, and less provoked, which is super useful because then you never have to really worry about things. Damage dealt increased by 15%. Attack speed increased by 10%. That's also fantastic. I think we're going to be playing something a little bit different this time, though. I'm thinking maybe a, a mining character, maybe like a dwarf or something like that, because smelting and blacksmithing, we could make our own weapons. We could make our own armor and stuff like that. I think that might be quite nice. Also, damage taken is reduced by 25%, up to 100 reduced damage. That seems really nice. Now, bear in mind that mining in this game is done very similar to Terraria where you hold left click and then you have a little pickaxe and the pickaxe does some kind of damage to the block. Now you can see here that if you're a dwarf then mining damage is doubled and the first initial pickaxe that you have does seven mining damage so you can imagine that, that being double that's going to be 14 damage which is basically the same as the next tier of pickaxe up. Um, pretty much. I mean the next tier is I believe a tin pickaxe up from uh, I think bronze or copper or something like that I'm not entirely sure what it is but anyway that one does like 12 so you're already getting a better one than the next tier of pickaxe and you also get amazing amounts of mining experience look at that 100% increased that is amazing now there's questing there's crafting and there's fighting. You can choose anything you want to do in this game. It's actually kind of amazing how many different options they give you. It's very open worldy. Uh, you can basically do whatever you want to advance in the game. And I'm gonna. Oh, oh this guy looks good. Okay, okay, I got it. I got it. Grum. Gr wait, 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 wait. Gr Grum. Grumble. There we go. That's his name. Grumble. Done. That is fantastic. I like it. He looks like a grumble, don't you think? He looks like a grumble. Let's do it. Do I want to play? Now, here's the thing. I've played through the tutorial already, but I kind of want to show you it because it does have a lot of story, and I think it's actually quite fun. So I'm going to play, th play through the tutorial. I already know what's going on, but it's maybe going to give you a better idea as to what the game is really all about. And you can see here, we have a healing potion in the top left. We also have a mana potion, I believe. And uh, isn't this like... This feels like this is procedurally generated or something like that as well. Maybe, maybe not, actually. Maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. But whatever the case, look at this. We're jumping. We're running. And I am ready to now speak to this guy. Hello, sir. I will die very soon. What? Who are you? Kavarth of the Tainted Rose Clan. Don't bother to remember my name. There are a few heartbeats left for me. I've never heard of the Tainted Rose. Perhaps it's better that you haven't. What happened to your eyes? 
My profession involves risk, and this time I won't escape my fate. I've been a treasure hunter throughout my life, forever seeking gold or rare items in the darkest of dungeons and caves. This time, I was successfully ambushed by a mob of troglodytes. I got most of them before they fled. However, I lost both of my eyes to their lucky strikes. Alright, are they still here? Those monsters must be lurking in the shadows. I can still sense their awful scent. I don't want to face them. Is there, is there a way out of this place? I, I don't think I have a sword right now, do I? Don't think so. All right. First, tell me how you got uh, how you got here. Okay, so here we go. Now we we get uh, you know some things to kind of like build our character's backstory and all that sort of thing. A gang of bandits pillaged my settlement in a swift attack. They put all houses to the torch and killed most of my people. Oh, terrible. Or, we have this, I'm a wanderer traveling across the Old Kingdom. It seems that I messed with the wrong type of people. I had to flee. So we're, <laughs> we're a scam artist or something. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. And then w the third one is, I don't want to talk about my past. What's done is done. There's no need to come back to it. Let's just say I had to leave. Okay, let's do that one. Let's, let's be mysterious. And you wanted to hide in here? That's so unfortunate. Oh, well, I got here by accident, actually. Several thugs were chasing me and decided to take my chances by falling into this pit. The old kingdom is crumbling in front of our eyes. Bands of ravagers act as they please, for there is nobody to stop them. Ah, okay, so we have, um, yeah, that, the king seems to be unaware, apparently. The dark times are upon us. Okay, so at least we're alive. I want to help you, but first we need to leave this place. Oh, he's, he's dead because he's been poisoned by the troglodytes by the looks of things. Okay, well... There you go. Okay, so he's actually going to allow me to dig through the wall here. So he's basically going to be um, giving me, giving me this uh, this multi tool thing. And look, at, look at this. This is because I'm a dwarf, by the way. When I was playing on my elf, this took me a huge amount of time to get through. And by the way, there's also interactions with the game world as well. So you can light these torches from a, a fair distance away, actually. It's pretty good how they give you a, a decent amount of range to them. And, oh, who's that? Who's that? He's helping us. Look at him. He's fighting the troglodytes. He's fighting the troglodytes. It's Niklos. Niklos, hello there, Niklos. Wow, he's got a ghoul pet. That is super, super cool. Come with me if you want. I mean, um, <clears throat> let's just try and get his voice right. Come with me if you want to live. How about that? Is it, does that work for him? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, thank you for saving me. I owe you my life. It was close, wasn't it? Those pesky troglodytes got what they deserved. I'm Niklos, but you may just call me Mage. How did you get here? I fell into a pit and, well, you know, uh, you, you know the story. And found yourself in this mess. Never mind, stranger. Your former life is not con not a concern of mine. However, if you want to repay your life debt, I need you to help me with some tasks. Okay. So this is basically just teaching us what we need to do. And uh, they're just t telling us, oh, look at this. You can loot some stuff. You can loot objects and all that, all that sort of thing. You can go in here and there's a helmet there. So if I want to, I can now access my inventory with B. And then I can literally just right click on that burlap hat. And now I have that equipped and it gives me one armor. Obviously, I am very, very low level right now. I'm basically level zero almost or level one or something like that. And now we have his robes. There you go. So that's that's basically what we have. Now, what you can also do later on is you can explore his house a little bit more. As you can see, this is currently gated off, unfortunately. But this place needs a thorough cleaning. Ah, I have your robe, actually. Splendid. I look more professional in black. I need some other things, too. Well, I'm all ears. To perform my right, I need to say the invocation in certain steps. My memory is a bit rusty, so I'll need to write down the words. Can you get my quill and book? Climb up and take a right turn. Right. Let's do it. Okay, yeah, so we're going this way. Yeah, so now they're obviously teaching us how to build, very much Terraria style, as you can see right here. I, I personally feel like it's easier to build in this game than it, than it is in Terraria. Maybe that's just me. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. But I like it. I like it so far. And, uh, okay, so there we go. That was it. Just looting that stuff, and now we're going to be going back. Is that is that something I can actually loot? Nah. Okay, unfortunate. Okay, here we go. Have your belongings, sir. There we go. This task requires some courage. All right, so we're going to be actually going in to the basement, and we are going to be killing some rats, Baldur's Gate style, potentially. Okay, so we're actually going to uh, get our torch out right here. There's a locked door right there that we're going to be exploring a little bit later on. 
And now there are two different modes in this game. You have build mode, which is what I'm currently in, and you also have combat mode. You can switch between these two modes by pressing R on your keyboard, and that's exactly what I'm going to need to do. So as you can see right here, we have a wooden shield and I have a wooden club. Now, the combat in this game, I feel, is actually very interactive. I feel like it actually rewards skill as well. And uh, there's, there's a little bit of an autosave right there. You can change the autosave... Um, uh, auto save interval as well if you want to and I would highly recommend doing that because by default it is on 180 seconds which is three minutes I think that might be a little bit too short at least for my liking because it does pause the game for a eh, pretty reasonable amount of time so you can see here the dialogue speed is 110 I think that's actually too much for me so I'm actually gonna put it on hundred you can hide your helmet as well for cosmetic reasons and I actually have autosave on 360 at the moment but I'm thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up to like 900 or something because I'm I'm pretty happy with how it's saving right now all right, so now we can just jump up here and now we just need to switch back to build mode and then we can go over to our multi-tool and because we're a dwarf, we can literally just eat through this wall insanely fast. I am actually very much enjoying being a dwarf at this point and I'm actually thinking that this might be my new main character because I actually really enjoy mining. I was actually enjoying mining a huge amount with my elf, but the elf doesn't really do it that well, you know what I mean? It doesn't really do it that well, so, you know kind of um, <laughs> kind of a bit of a shame that I uh, created that one but it's all right it's all right because we're actually going to be looting some food right now and I can eat that however I want they use a similar system to Kenshi uh, if you know Kenshi that's a very hardcore sort of survival RPG sort of thing and now they use the same kind of system as Kenshi where you basically just put your food in your consumable slot up there and then basically whenever your character needs food or drink because there is you know there is a meter for each up here as you can see hunger 87% and thirst 87%. So basically you can just do that and then whenever you need food or drink it will automatically use it which in my opinion is really nice so we're just going to be placing the bottle of water over there as well and now we can use this little trap door thing we're going to continue to just use a couple of these torches to you know, get them, uh, get them activated. Oh no, there's a, there's a rat. I have my inventory open still. That's not very good. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's try and, let's try and uh, do some damage. Bear in mind that um, the combat, as I said before, is very dynamic. So you can literally avoid all attacks if you're good enough. Because basically, obviously these are just rats right now, yeah? These are just rats. These are super, super easy to defeat. But later on, you're gonna have some, you're gonna have some pretty strong opponents to deal with. And it's not going to be as easy, but you're obviously still going to need to learn how to dodge relatively well. Because if you don't do that, then it's going to be... I mean, it's not going to be impossible to do stuff, obviously, but it's going to be something that you probably want to learn how to do a little bit earlier on than later. You know what I mean? There we go. Now we've crafted. This is the crafting menu as well. So you, it's, it's very much Terraria style where you basically have ingredients and then you can make a whole bunch of stuff. What I would definitely say this game is is Terraria's mechanics for the most part, but it has much deeper RPG elements to it. Whereas Terraria is kind of like a crafting action action sort of RPG. This is much more of an RPG. It puts more focus on the actual RPG, you know? And I very much like that. Just look at, look at what I have right here. I have heavy weapons, light weapons, combat which is just regular regular stuff like increasing your armor uh, e evasive rolling i haven't actually rolled yet because i am absolutely awful but yeah a uh, roll is q so you can do that whenever you want you can also spec into spells if you want to obviously as a dwarf i'm probably not going to have um i could actually spec into that <laughs> i could actually spec into fire that is actually hilarious should i do that I'm, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Actually, we've got a bunch of other things as well here. So we have, like, Ice Barrier. Look at that. Create an Ice Barrier around you. It absorbs 20 damage. That's actually super, super useful. It does it does take 20 mana, though. I'm not entirely sure how long, it, how long it lasts or anything like that. And then we have... What do we have here? Like, Earth Magic or something? Oh, look at that. You can summon a rat. 
Oh, I haven't really explored the spell trees that much because I, I went for like light weapons and heavy weapons with my elf. So I kind of didn't really, uh, really do that. Launches a spectre that passes through enemies dealing five damage and applying enfeeble curse to all enemies hit. Enfeeble curse causes them to take 20% increased damage. Oh, <gasps> you can also summon a skeleton. Oh. Oh, 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 skeleton warrior, what? Skeleton warrior? Skeleton warlord. Skeleton arch, oh, uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, I will, can, can I, uh, how do I, how do I put that on my bar? Wait a minute, how do I put that on my bar? How do I do that? Wait a minute, where, where are my skills? There, there are my skills. Okay, so let's put that on three, right? So, boom. Uh, cast it? Yeah, there he is. Hey, Jeff. Your your name is Jeff now. My skeleton's name is Jeff. He is going to be helping me. And uh, obviously at the moment he's kind of useless because I just summoned him for fun. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's good. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. All right. So this is your journal as well, by the way. You could get your journal, as you could see, up at the top right there. It just tells you that you could press J to do that. I crafted a campfire, so now all I need to do is head back to the fellow that needs to speak to us. The little Niklos mage guy. And uh, then we're going to see what we can do here. I'm uh, actually using way too much of my stamina. I don't know whether you've noticed that. But yeah, I'm using way too much of my stamina by jumping and just generally running around really, really fast. Because I'm having a whale of a time in this game. And um, yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's do this. Here's your campfire, sir. Maybe they didn't want you to leave. Oh, yes. Okay, so basically this guy was kicked out of his village because of... You know, accusations of him being some kind of necromancer slash, you know, dark mage of some kind. And obviously we've already seen him cast a ghoul. So it could very well be that he is indeed a necromancer. And I've just specced into necromancy basically as well because I'm able to summon skeletons now. So who knows what's going to happen when I, <laughs> when I actually enter town. All right. So yeah, as you can see. If you happen to get into trouble, go straight to Hardwin in Woodbury. He won't turn you down. Is that all you need now? Well, there's one last thing I needed to do. Otherwise, you could, uh, afterwards you can come along. All right. So, yeah, he's basically going to perform some kind of ritual. And he needs us to obviously pick up all of these uh, all of these pieces of ingredients and stuff like that. Now he's teaching us how to do farming and gardening and uh, planting flowers and so on and so forth. So you can see here that, that, that you can literally see all of these wonderful uh, little props here and you could create stuff like this later on, which is really quite fantastic. Oh, I can actually go in here. Are you serious? I didn't even check that the first time I did this. Oh, okay, well, there's nothing in here, unfortunately. Would have been cool to... Maybe steal some stuff from him. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, in general, you know, you got to try and make the most of things. Okay, so we're just going to be picking up all the plants. There we go. Easy enough. And we're also going to be selecting our hoe now. And we are going to then hoe or till the soil. So you need to tilt the soil before you can plant stuff. And then you're going to be able to uh, have a pretty good time of things. Obviously, because I'm a dwarf, I'm not really going to be doing that that much. Uh, with this character, I feel like it's not really worth it. But um, if you select something like uh, maybe a wild elf or maybe um, one of the other races where you actually have like a benefit to that, then um, yeah, that, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be pretty easy. Did I did I not do, did I not do it? Did I did I not do did I not do that? I thought I did that. Okay, wait a minute. Ah, there we go. I hoed the dirt and took the flowers. Okay, so yeah, I actually just missed one tile because I am an imbecile, but there you go. Yes, I, I missed one and so the quest would not complete, but we found that out relatively fast. So there you go. I did what you asked. Good job. I think, will, I think we'll get along just fine, don't you? Here, have some seeds. You can plant them on tilled soil. Just use them wisely. Well, thank you. Will you perform your right now? Yes, I'm ready now. Come along and witness powerful magic. Okay, let's follow him. All right, hopefully nothing's going to happen. Like, he's not going to be attacked by some... Sheriffs. Yes, they've come to uh, try to arrest him, and he is not going to surrender. So they're going to fight. Yes, they're going to fight. Now, the first time I did this, I, uh, I literally tried to help him. <laughs> I literally try to help him. Unfortunately, this is a very high-level battle, and it is highly unlikely I would be able to even beat these guys, let's face it. Um, but I did try to do that, 
and uh, yeah, it, it it doesn't work. They they don't allow you to join the fight, which is uh, somewhat sad. But obviously, because they are so high level, it would not make any difference. Um, either way, even if I were to join, and you could see the person's health by the way by the color of their name. And you could see that he, uh, his name turned from green to yellow to red, and so you can you can see what kind of um, what kind of HP he has. So there was no no need for uh, a health bar or anything like that to come up. So I, I like that actually. Anyway, um, I actually have to speak to this guy. So as as he says, nobody will escape us. And I say, who are you? We are the executioners of the temple, witch hunters to be precise. Why did you attack Mage Niklaus? You've got wits to question a witch hunter, don't ya? He was a heretic, and for that reason we put end to his miserable existence. That's what happens when you deal with forbidden lore. Oh, I don't, I don't believe he deserves such a fate, actually, sir. And I have reasons to believe otherwise. Now go about your business while you can still walk. Well, I have nowhere to go. You can't stay here. This place smells of corruption. Nearby, there's a village called Woodbury. As far as I know, the blacksmith Hardwin is said to be a decent man. You should talk to him. Well, okay, fine, I will then. And uh, now that means that I can just press M, and then we get the map. Now, this map is actually relatively large, as you can see right here. And you can also scroll overward, uh, over, over there as well. And there's a huge amount of content on the map itself. Just think about this. Small section like this, there's how many places that I can go to? There's one, two, three... Uh, it's an in inaccessible location. Four, which is Woodbury, where I need to go. Five, Rat Pit. And then we have some malicious tunnels right there. There's also a camp right there, which I assume I will be able to go to a little bit later on, but not from this current location. So I'm actually thinking that what I would like to do is I would like, ideally, because there are secrets to be found as well. As you can see right here, there's four secrets in this area. And there's a number of different uh, possible things that you might be able to pick up there too. I'm, It's actually a quest location as well. So what I'm thinking I'm doing is I'm actually going to go to Woodbury right now, which is obviously the the main the main hub of this particular area, and we're going to be speaking to a bunch of people. There's a chest down there as well. I'm not entirely sure how to get chests right now. Actually, can I can I mine downwards? No, I don't think I can mine downwards right there. Um, obviously, the, this chest right here. I think I probably need to go from below so we're obviously going to figure that out these people don't really have that much to say as you can see basically what you can do is you can ask them about you know the village and you, and they tell you a little bit of backstory and so on and so forth um, but they don't really tell you anything that is going to give you a quest or anything like that as far as I'm aware because if you say I'm looking for work then she says I'm sorry stranger but there is nothing I would like you to do you'd better ask Hardwin he may need your help yeah so Hardwin is basically the blacksmith of the um, of the village and obviously he was a friend of mage Niklaus so obviously I'm gonna head over there and see what he has to say for himself and maybe we're gonna be able to um, get something from him and uh, for a fact I know that he does obviously and <laughs> he's going to tell us something very interesting uh, I'm looking for work mage Niklaus told me I should talk to you when I'm in need he also trains us in blacksmithing and smelting by the way and obviously because I'm a dwarf it would be a great idea for us to make friends with this guy as much as we possibly can. Now, unfortunately, you are going to need, and you guessed it, money. Yes, you need money to be able to train, obviously, because, I mean, these are just regular townsfolk. They're obviously, you know, some stranger walks into town and you just go, train me in blacksmithing, sir. And then he goes, hey, wh wh why are you asking me that? Uh, uh, you, you give me 12 silver or whatever it is. How much is it? 11 silver. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. That's that's what's going to happen. All right, so friends of Nick Klaus are my friends as well. Captain Kales has ordered me to bring him axes, but first I need to have proper materials to craft them, and I need them now. Oh, well, uh, what do you need? In order to craft so many axes, I'll need 18 tin oars. Go to Miner Jeremy and bring me those oars. They should have been here a long time ago. Go with haste. Okay, yeah, I'll get them for you. Why not? That's what I wanted to hear. You'll find Jeremy's mine underneath my house. I shall await your return. Okay, yeah, you can also trade with him if you want to. So basically, I could sell a bunch of giant rat pelts and rocks. These are blocks, obviously. So technically, if you wanted to, you could place those rocks on your bar. 
So like, for example, I could put it up at the top there and then I could use them to build like uh, barriers or whatever you, yeah, whatever you may want to do. And I'm actually thinking that I might sell some of this rat stuff. I'm actually not entirely sure, but what I really love actually about this game so far as well is the, um, the stack amounts. I feel like the stack amounts are really nice because obviously in games like Terraria and Minecraft and so on and so forth, they use a certain kind of stack amount and Terraria is very much moddable, so you can you can install a bunch of mods and stuff like that for it. But I like how the, the base game of Realms of Magic is just doing that straight away. So you can see here, for example, rocks. They allow you to have 1,000 of these things in one stack, which I very much appreciate. And also, you can expand your backpack even further, as you can see right here. These, these little lock icons are obviously making it so that um, you know that there are additional things that you can do to expand that. We also have plant seeds right here. It grows four, four times faster on fertile soil, and it has a growing time of two days. The total value of these seeds is actually three silver 40, but if we can find a plot of land to grow them, then I might be able to even make more money than that, which is definitely something I'm looking forward to. Now, this armor right here as you can see has stats on it as well look at that it has plus 15 health plus four stamina you've got plus 15 health damage taken minus seven percent damage taken minus seven percent with stamina physical damage increase of plus 26 percent and you also have tin hatchet tin pickaxe tin hose and so on now the really cool thing that i have found so far is that you can enter any of these little places right here and you can just use their stuff so you can basically use the furnace you can um, you can access some of their goods as well. So, for example, if I just take all of that, they don't mind. Apparently, they don't mind if you just take their things, which I think is rather amusing because I uh, I actually did do that with my other character, and I found some really amazing items from one of these guys. I'm actually not entirely sure where it was now, um, but maybe I can find it again because I think that could be really useful. So, anyway, maybe here? No, no, this is all dilapidated and everything, isn't it? So, yeah. Oh, well, maybe this? Oh, yeah, as you can see, look at that. Burlap cloth. You've got some jute and some burlap rope and all that sort of thing. So that's obviously going to be really, really nice for us, potentially. And what do we have going on here? Oh, hello. Aha, there we are. That's exactly what I'm talking about. A tin hoe. Think I already have one of those? Yes, I already have one of those. So that's obviously not really going to help me that much. But, yeah, you know, it's there, you know. I think that's pretty cool. Um, now, the really cool thing as well about the tool system is that you have a multi-tool. So the multi-tool, basically what that does, oh, look at that, you can actually pick the apple trees as well. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't mention that. But yeah, basically every single thing that you think would be interactable is indeed interactable, and you wouldn't think so initially. It's just really kind of crazy. Anyway, you can uh, loot all of this, but yeah, as I was saying, the multi-tool. So basically, whenever you come across something that you can interact with, with any of these tools, so in other words, uh, shovel is obviously for dirt and sand and stuff like that. Then you have the pickaxe, which is for uh, harder, harder materials. Then you have the hatchet for wood and so on. And then obviously you have the hammer for, well, something. And so here's Jeremy. Miner's work is never done. Well, good day, Jeremy. Blacksmith uh, Hardwin is waiting for your oars. Greetings, stranger. I apologize for the delay, but currently I'm having unexpected troubles. The troubles will come when we won't have access for the captain. I'm actually just going to say what happened. We're just going to be nice to him. A vast hold of rats has decided to claim my mine as their lair. Uh, well, uh, if, I, if you aren't afraid of a few rats, you don't know how big they can get. I've put my life in danger too many times to get to these oars. Uh, his voice is all over the place, isn't it? I had no idea how to voice him, to be honest. Anyway... Uh, yeah, if, um, I'm gonna actually try and help him with this, um, with this stuff. But yeah, we, we did get the tin ore, but I am actually gonna go and kill, uh, some of these rats, because I think that, uh, doing that is probably gonna help him quite nicely. Oh, look at that, he can train us in mining for 2 silver, 20 copper, which is actually not even that much. I think that's pretty nice. And you can also craft some additional things here. So, for example, rat on a stick. I can literally craft some food right here. And we're also going to be gaining experience in crafting or cooking, as, as the case may be uh, in this particular 
um, th this particular skill. Because if you take a look, uh, wait a minute, uh, where where is that again? Oh, there are so many. Ah, there we go. Really, really amazing amounts of menus right here, and amazing amounts of skills too. Look at this. We got mining, wood cutting, herbalism, farming, husbandry. So obviously you, ha you can have animals and stuff like that. Smelting, tanning, weaving, milling, crafting itself is obviously a, a, its own skill. Then you have blacksmithing, leatherworking, tailoring, cooking, alchemy, and trading. And if you're a goblin, you get a bonus to trading, which you probably want to think about because I, I feel like having a bonus to trading could be extremely lucrative. Oh, hello there. Oh, yes, I will be mining all of this. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I missed the thing that I actually wanted to get. Yeah, I did miss the thing that I wanted to get, which is actually making me kind of annoyed right now. So I'm going to go back because I'm not entirely sure what I... Ah, wait a minute. Here, I think it is. So, yes, here. There it is. Yeah, that's the thing that I wanted to get. This is perfect. All right, so this is a tin pickaxe. As you can see, it is so much better than, than the stone pickaxe that we had before. So we're just going to be equipping that. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. So there's obviously a number of other things that you can do as well. So, for example, you can replace your weapons. I'm obviously using a pine mace at the moment, which is absolutely... Uh, it, it's really terrible. It is really terrible. But it is going to be upgraded relatively soon, if I can help it. Thank you. I will try to get that upgraded as soon as possible. But look at how fast we are murdering these things. I mean, we're, we're technically not murdering them, obviously, but... Just look at how fast we are going through this. Yeah, my elf took a long time to get through these. So it's really nice to have that little extra little extra bit there. And look at that. We found a secret. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right, so Mysterious Essence, what's this? Combine Mysterious Essences with Powerful Essence to create a potion of knowledge which permanently grants one talent point. Oh, now, it also has a value of 10 silver as well. You also have cutthroat boots. Look at that. We've got some cutthroat boots. I like it. And we also have minor healing potion, minor mana potion, minor strength elixir. And we also have Old Kingdom Holidays, which is a book that we can indeed read. Let's read it. This is by Jeremy Inkspill. <laughs> is that is that the minor guy? Is that, is, that his, is, that, is that his surname? I'm actually not entirely sure. Whoa, there's a huge amount of... Oh, wow. Okay, there's a huge amount of pages right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to read through all of this, but you can just pause the video on this particular page and then pause it here and then pause it here and then pause it here. And then pause it here. If you want to read the entire book, then it's available to you right now. Anyway, we are now going to move on and hopefully not get murdered by some large rats. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, there we go. I'm thankful that the jumping in this game is really powerful as well. So I literally don't have to worry too much about getting absolutely massacred. And why is this pumpkin not being... Wait a minute. Ah, we're at 33 hunger. I assume it's going to be consumed when it when we reach about 20% hunger. So that's good to know. All right. So I have my skeleton, right? So what I'm going to do... <laughs> the, look, at the, look at the face on that rat. Look at the face on him. He's literally just waiting. He's like, mm, nom, nom, nom. Ah, dwarf. It's been a while since I've had dwarf. Yeah, that's probably what he's, what he's saying right now. Okay, let's jump. And let's summon... Go, Jeff. Go, go. Get get him. Get him. Get him, Jeff. Get him. Okay, yeah. So, so far, things are... Ah! Okay, things are going fine. Jeff is not doing so well, gotta say. Can I summon him and then he just goes and fights? No. Okay, I actually need... <laughs> okay, I actually need to jump down there and then summon him. So let's uh, let's actually do that again. Ah, get out of there. Get out of there. Thank you. Now, bear in mind that most things are regenerating, by the way. So mana regenerates, stamina regenerates, and health regenerates, as far as I'm aware. So it's really quite nice. Now, we're just going to continue summoning Skeleton so that we can um, continue to have him help us. And so far, everything seems to be... Yeah! What? That was it? Oh! <gasps> I wanted more of that. Oh, I wanted more fighting. Yeah, that was super fun. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, literally, that's that's the point. This game is... I, I don't know what it is about it, but I just want to play more and more and more of it. It's kind of like, it's got that sort of 
addictive nature to it you know it's kind of like i want to see where this goes i want to see where that goes it's like a mystery you know everything's just mysterious and new and i just can't wait to see what happens next anyway stone axe yeah that's a wonderful new weapon for us right there i like it and we've got six silver look at that we have six silver and 58 copper very cool all right let's continue to explore here can i go through here i think i can yes indeed Look at that. I can go right through here. Look at, look at, look at that. We are eating through the wall. And there's a secret. That is indeed a secret. If ever I saw one. There you go. You found a secret. <gasps> a copper pickaxe. Oh, yeah. Okay. And massive, massive amounts of money as well. Look at that. Massive amounts of money. Okay. We are doing fantastically. Okay. Give me that. So I didn't even need to go back and steal that guy's pickaxe. So now we're going to be able to spec into blacksmithing if we want to. And then we're going to be able to go wherever we want, which is going to be super, super nice. Because I'm hopeful that maybe I'll be able to... Uh, maybe I can... Can I actually... Hmm. I'm actually wondering... Ah, hello there. There are some ores here, which I would like to get. Let's get some of this. Mining has increased to level 4. I like it. Now bear in mind that... By the looks of things, mining does not allow you to go through every single piece of environment right now. But what I would expect that to be is probably just because we're in the tutorial and that's it. I don't think uh, that is because of the uh, the full game or anything like that. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that after the tutorial is over, of course. But generally, I'm having such a whale of a time right now. I kind of just want to get all of this stuff. We're getting what is this? tin ore this is literally tin ore and we're going to be able to smelt this like no one's business and then we'll have so many wonderful resources okay did i did i loot all the uh did i loot all the oh no i didn't loot all the rats because they're actually stacked on each other that could be something that might be a little bit uh maybe maybe something could be done about that because it's kind of hard to loot um loot multiple enemies if they're stacked on each other you know that kind of thing so maybe it would be cool to see something about that. Because the developers are very, very open to um, to feedback from their player base and indeed from, from anyone that plays the game. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to speak to him. Hello there. All rats in the mine are dead. That's terrific. I knew you were fit for this job. Now I can immediately get down to work. Please accept that as a reward. It seems to be magical. I hope it's not dangerous. Uh, the rats are dead, but I have some bad news. Oh, I know. I've seen what they did to my tools. These cursed vermin can chew through almost anything. It seems I need your help. Uh, sure. What can I do for you? To keep up with work, I need a new set of tools. Could you get me some? Okay, well, what do you need precisely? Not much. Please get me a copper pickaxe and a copper shovel from Arwin. It will do fine. Come back when you got them. Okay, I'm gonna, um, uh, yeah, train me in mining. <gasps> what? What? Did you see that? What? What? It's leveled me up like no one's business. I am literally like level what now? 21 or something? I have 19. What? I have 19 available talents. Oh yeah, you know what I'm going to do now. Oh yeah, give me, give me this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are these all 30 mana? Yes, they are all 30 mana. That is actually hilarious. Okay, wait a minute. Is there anything else that I really want to do here? Increases damage done by necromancy summons. And Dreadbolt. I'm not a big fan of Dreadbolt, actually. I gotta say. I think it's cool. Don't get me wrong. But I personally really like... <gasps> Increases the duration of undead summons. By 5 seconds. Yes. Yes, I will take all of this. Increases the duration of this. Reduces the mana cost. I don't really care about the mana cost too much right now, at least. I mean, the Warlord right here is still 30 mana. You need to be level 30 for that. Okay, yeah, let's just let's just continue increasing the duration and increasing the damage that our necromancy summons can do. I mean, really, that is so, so fun. And then we also have ghouls, deal less damage than skeletons, but are harder to kill. Ghoul also applies the stamina reducing debuff to enemies to cast it. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I'm obviously not going to be doing anything about that because I just want to get that. There we go. All right, so we're actually going to be going into combat right now. And then I'm going to go into the skills here. Can I summon all of these, actually? I feel like I can probably summon all of these. 
deal more damage. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think the defender is probably going to be the best thing for us right here. But I think I can probably cast all of these things if I had more mana. But unfortunately, I don't have a huge amount of mana right now. So obviously, that's not going to uh, particularly work. Now, this is really cool too. To increase your armor... Uh, and the armor of your allies, which basically means, hey, uh, I've just summoned a huge amount of guys. They're going to be able to now, you know, gain a huge amount of armor too, which is really fantastic. But I don't think I'm actually going to be doing anything with that right now. What else do we have here? Uh, I'm using an axe right now, aren't I? So maybe I want to continue using axes or something. There is a bunch of other things too, like axe throw, as you can see right there. Axe throw, it could be really, really fun. Third axe hit in sequence deals significantly more damage too. I mean, there are so many different things to select from that I'm having a hard time deciding. Uh, stamina cost with sprinting. Sure, let's get a, a little bit of that. Let's improve my health. Health regeneration sounds fun. Revitalizing start it increases your health region by 5, but drains 10 stamina per second. That might, I, I don't know. My stamina is pretty awful right now. Increases armor by 10. Maybe we can increase this a little bit more. Increases health regeneration. There we go. And what about this? Defensive stance. Wow, that's actually insane for a dwarf. In my opinion, a defensive stance could be the most powerful thing that we could take as a dwarf. Because we already have 25% damage reduction. Uh, up to 100 damage, that is, obviously. So there, there's also that. And you also have... Look at this. You have poisons. You have poison daggers. You can create a rogue or something. Wow, that is kind of crazy. Okay, so what else do we actually have available here? I'd like to increase my stamina, but I'm not entirely sure where to do that. Uh, I, I assume here? Roll avoids any damage? No, no. What about here? No, that, that doesn't seem to make any difference either. Where's the stamina? That's the thing. Where are the stamina buffs? I have no idea. Okay, let's increase our magic resistance. Why not? There we go. Okay, so that's what I've got. I've got defensive stance now as well, even though I didn't really want it. But I think it's going to be really useful. So we're just going to be putting that on uh, number five or something. I don't really care, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that. look at that. Okay, so that's defensive... Wait a minute. I want it... Oh, uh, seven? Okay, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. So you can't have a shield and defensive stance on at the same time, or can you? No, you can. Okay, so that's basically just a spell. Okay, I was a little bit worried about that for a second because I thought to myself, I'm unequipping my shield to go into defensive stance, but no, that is actually not a big deal. Not a big deal whatsoever. So now I have 105 HP, and I don't think I'm ever going to die again, but we'll see. <laughs> I heard good things about you. Okay, I have the ores you asked me for. Great, you've done well. Those ores look really pure at the first glance. Okay, well, um... What do you want me to do now? In order to become a, smil a skilled blacksmith, you need to learn how to smell ores properly. It will do you good to practice it as often as you can. But I'm eager to become a blacksmith quickly. Not so fast, will you? To become a fine blacksmith, you need to start from the beginning, and that's the dirty work. You can smelt the ores in the furnace next to me. Meanwhile, prepare my tools and anvil to make them ready for forging axes for the captain. Can you now smelt nine bars? Okay, yeah, sure. Fine. Uh, yeah, I'm on it. Why not? Take these coal ores to heat up the furnace. Okay, yeah. But here's the thing. I could just train in this. Yeah. Look at that. Smelting has increased 6,700. So, yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. There we are. Okay, so we've le we've leveled up another bunch, which is actually hilarious. Okay, so let's make nine of these. Wow, look at how fast that was. Are you serious? <laughs> uh, did, wait, did I need to make tin or did I need to make copper? Oh, no, I have no idea what he said now. I have all the tin bars for you. Oh, there we go. Uh, was that it? Okay. What about in blacksmithing? I don't have enough money for that. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Okay, so... What we're going to do now is I'm going to save and we're going to just uh, call this uh, basically whatever. That's generally what I tend to do with my save games. And now we're going to go to the main menu because I would love to be able to see what happens with a different character. So well, what about gnomes? What are these guys good at? No one may ever call you a filthy casual because you're playing on hard mode. 
Wow, this is hard mode. Look at this. Health points decreased by 20. Mana points decreased by 20. Health, stamina, and mana regener regeneration decreased by 25%. So basically, uh, yeah, there's also average lifespans as well, by the way. I, don't, I didn't actually mention this before, but there are average lifespans for every single race and they're all very different as you can see goblins live up to 50 uh, live up to 150 actually uh, the lizard men live up to 150 and the goblins live up to 60 years dwarves live up to 200 years orcs live up to 75 dark elves 350 uh, high elves 350 and wild elves 350 i assume humans live up to 75 so there's a huge amount of different things that you can go for here. I'm going to go for the Lizard Man. Why not? Let's go for the Lizard Man, and we're just going to randomize him a little bit right here. And we're not going to play through the tutorial. Are you sure you want to skip the tutorial? Yes. Yes. I want to see what happens. I want to see what happens here, because I am... Oh, there we go. We actually just appear right here in the town, in the first town that you, uh, that you go to. And so I, I personally feel like going through the tutorial is actually really useful. Uh, because it does set the backdrop and all that sort of thing. And it gives you a whole bunch of uh, extra resources and stuff like that. And uh, basically, I assume if I go and speak to Mr. Hardwin now, he's probably going to be giving me something. So let me actually just take a quick look. Yeah, I'm looking for work. Captain Chaos ordered me to bring some axes. Yeah, there we go. So that's basically what he's going to do. He's going to say, get me 18 tin ores and so on and so forth. And then we can continue with the story um, at, at that point. But... I'm going to do that um, in my own time because I am actually having a whale of a time playing with my, my with my new character, with my dwarf. And I can't wait to start exploring the world map and actually building building stuff and getting my garden up and running and my farming and all that, all that sort of thing. I really cannot wait to do that. And if you too want to join me in the world of Realms of Magic, then there is a link in the description and they currently have a sale going on too so if you want to pick it up at a reduced price well you know what to do i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>